Welcome to another tutorial and this one we are going to build a spiral that will rotate and change colors and um, thickness according to sounds and music. So it's a bit of an art project this one. We're going to start by just uh, deleting the cat that comes in the beginning and we're going to change our the background color of our stage uh, by clicking on the pen underneath and selecting that paint bucket tool. I'm going to fill it with black just so that the colors of my spiral, they all stand out because it's going to be multicolored. Alright, now we need to have a script. So if you notice, if I go to scripts, there's no motion blocks or anything because I can't add scripts to the stage. So I'm going to choose this paint, uh, paint new script. And then I'm not actually going to draw one. I'm going to go into the scripts and have it drop for me. So I'm going to start by, I need to have a, I'm going to go to more blocks and I'm going to start by making a block. And we're going to type in draw spiral. So I'm going to build all of my blocks off of this one. Um, so I'm going to start with, now I can go into the motions and, and add some motions. So we're going to have a point in direction. And inside this point in direction, I need a variable. I actually need quite a few variables for this project. So we're going to go into data and just start making some of those variables. The first one that we're going to have is a repeats variable. Make another one. The second one we're going to have is going to be a draw length. Third one, we're going to have a draw length increase. Fourth one, we're going to have a turn angle. And the fifth one, we're going to have a start direction. So quite a few variables we're going to be playing with. We don't want them all showing up here, so we're just going to uncheck all those. Now back in my points direction, I'm going to drag in this start direction variable. From there, I'm going to go to the pen and I'm going to choose pen up. And then I'm going to have it start in a direction of uh, center on my screen. So I want to have it just go to uh, 0, 0, x0, zero, y0 zero on my screen. And then I'm going to choose a set the start direction to 0. All right, so basically what I've told it to do is that we're going to point in a start direction. I'm going to be starting at the center of my screen at 0, 0. Um, and now what I want to do is put my pen down to begin drawing it. So go to the pen and choose pen down. And we're going to need a repeating loop in here. So that as it starts to draw my spiral, it will be moving, turning angles, and repeating that process. So I'm going to repeat and with my variable of repeats and I'm going to change my, use the drop down and choose change draw length by and in here I want to put draw length increase. Um, and actually up here is set start direct, oh yeah it's set to zero, good. All right, now what I want to do is I need a motion, so I'm going to have it move. Not 10 steps, though. I'm going to use one of those variables I made, and I'm going to have it move my draw length. And then another motion, I need to have it turn so many degrees, and again, it's going to be moving my turn angle variable that I made. And once all that's done, I'm going to put the pen back up. Now what I need to do, I can't run the project yet because there isn't any code to trigger the new block that we've made. So I need to go into the events and choose the when clicked. And now I'm going to go back to the data and I'm going to choose several of these set start directions to zero, but I'm going to change them up. So the first one, I'm going to use the drop down and, and choose repeats, 900. Then I'm going to drag another one over, 
This one's going to use draw length increase to 0 0.02. And I'm going to drag another one over. And this one's going to set the turn angle to 0. And I'm going to drag the final one over. And this time, we're going to leave it at start direction to 0. Okay, now we're going to go into pen and choose our, we want it to set pen size. So the very bottom one, drag that one over here and change that to 5. And then choose the very top one to clear all that. Go on to where we made our block, draw a spiral. Now you can run the project. Oops, okay, that is definitely not drawing a spiral. So let's just see where I missed something. 0.02, turn angle. Oh, sorry, I did not set a turn angle. So we need to set the turn angle here to 6. So let's try that again. There we go. And you can watch it draw. So it takes about 30 seconds to draw this out. Um, all right, I do see one other slight problem with our script is up top here I have uh, set draw, set start direction to zero, whereas it should say set draw length to zero. So I'm going to try that again. You'll notice it's much tighter in here now. But again, it takes about 30 seconds to draw this out, which is rather slow. So we can speed that up by going up to where we defined our spiral. Oh, lovely. I see that I spelt spiral wrong. Oh, well. So uh, what we can do is edit that. So if you click on that, we want to edit and go to your options. In fact, that's going to bother me. I'm going to spell it properly. Um, so I'm going to fix that one too just because uh, I don't like that. All right, so it's actually not letting me fix that. Hopefully you haven't made this mistake. So just ignore what I'm doing at this section while I correct. I'm seriously having typing problems today. Spiral. All right, put that in there. Um, and I didn't write draw spiral because I am not being very smart. All right, draw spiral. Just ignore this. Hopefully you haven't spelt it wrong. If you did, again, it's not a big deal. The teacher in me wants to correct my spelling. All right, so anyways, as I said, we can speed up the process. So I can double click and edit that. Go into options and we can run it without a screen refresh. If you hit the green flag again, you'll notice nothing happens. That is because it's happening so fast, you actually don't even see it draw. So we're going to change that as well. What we're going to do is we're going to add in a set spin speed. So we're going to actually make another variable and we're going to call this one spin speed. Just uncheck that. And we're going to drag in this set spin speed just above where we have our um, set pen size here. So the very last one here. So we're going to set the spin speed to 10. And we're going to use a forever loop in inside here as well. So drag over this forever loop. And I want inside here the clear and the draw spiral to stay. But I'm also going to add in one of the data. And I want it to say change. Well, I'm going to choose this change spin speed. But I'm actually going to use the drop down menu to have it say change start direction. And I'm going to have it, um, instead of by one, I'm going to drag in, I'm going to change that start direction by the spin speed. Now let's try running that again. 
So now you can actually see it turning or it looks like it's rotating. It gives you that sort of optical illusion. All right, now another thing we could do is add some color to this project. So I'm just going to stop that for now. We're going to add um, another variable. This one's going to be color change. And I'm going to drag uh, a set color change to just in between this pen, uh, pen size and spin speed. So I'm going to set the color change to 3. And we can play with that later on. All right, I'm also going to set a pen color to 0. So I'm going to go into the pen and I'm going to choose this set pen color to 0 and I'm going to drag it inside the forever loop just underneath the clear. And let's see. Um, <laughs> there's another uh, code, line of code, we want to put inside the define draw spiral to make this happen. So we're going to choose the change pen color. Uh, this one. So change pen color. And we're going to put this just at the top inside our for, uh, repeating loop. And rather than by 10, we're going to use that one of those variables, the color change that we just made. All right, so let's try running that loop again. There we go. Now you can see that we've got color change happening. So another thing that we can do is we can make this color change and the thickness of our lines move according to sounds or music that maybe that you're playing. So what we're going to do next is uh, inside our forever loop, we're going to choose a set where it says uh, set color change to. We're going to put that one just up top here in between the clear and the set pet color, pen color. Use the drop down and change. Um, actually, we need to add in another one. So lots of variables in here. So this time we're going to choose make a variable sound level. And now I should be able to drop down here and set sound level to. We need an operator where we want the loudness to be adjusted according to the sensitivity. I'm going to uncheck that. So let's go into the operators and choose the one that has the equal sign. And now we can have it sense uh, the loudness into the first uh, circle there. Oops. Want to make sure it's going inside, not the whole thing. Just want that circle there. So I want to set the loudness to equal our sensitivity data variable that we made. Okay, so I haven't made it, so let's make it. So I'm going to make a variable sensitivity. And now I can drag that into the second circle there. All right, so now I'm going to choose one more pen. This time I want to set the pen size. So the very bottom one. We're going to put that underneath our new sound level. And I want the send, I, I need another variable. I want to set the pen size to divide by 5. So I'm going to choose this one, the bottom one here, divide by. And I'm going to divide it by 5. Inside the first circle, I want to have my variable of sound level. Drag that one into the first circle. I always seem to have problems getting it inside where I want that one. Okay, and I'm also going to change what it says in here. So this time I'm going to have an equal operator. Okay, 
Okay, and this time I'm going to have the sound level equal 10. So go to your data and drag in sound level in the first one. See if I can get it this time. There we go. And let's run that project again. So now your circle should be reacting according to the level of sound. Um, my sound hasn't changed much. One thing that you can do is we can actually um, bring up the color change and sensitivity. So I can play around with how much color change is happening and the sensitivity of it reading the audio, so if you're playing music or whatnot. So what you can do is you can double click. I'm on a Mac, so I double click. Here's the control, I believe it's control shift click, and change it to read as a slider on both of those. And now if I change the sensitivity, okay, so now you can really see it's responding to the difference in, in volume control. Okay, I can also make the color change respond um, or change a lot more as well. So these are fun things to play with if you're playing some music or, or just want to make different sounds or talk loud or clap or whatever it is. Now you might not want to view these all the time, especially if you're going into full screen mode. So another thing we can do is we can add a button on our keyboard to show and hide these two variables. So if we go into our events tab, we can choose uh, when the space is pressed and maybe I want to use, keep it simple, and use um, S, press S on your keyboard to show these variables. So go into data and go show variable sensitivity, show variable color change, and then choose a different event or a different uh, button on your keyboard, maybe you keep it simple again, H to hide, and hide those variables. So hide the sensitivity and hide the color change. So now if I run the project again, I can press H on my keyboard and those variables are gone and S to show them. So, oops, I see why the other one's not showing because I've got two hides in here. So I want to hide, um, or sorry, I want to show the color change up here. I put the wrong one. So show the variable color change. Okay, so let's just run that again, refresh. So show, there we go. They're both showing now so that if I wanted to, I could play with them or I can press H to hide both of them and have this go in full screen. So neat little project, play around with that. Um, you may wanna, you know, these are good variables to know how to show and hide in other future projects or have your project re react according to sound. So. Hope you've enjoyed this little art project.